Hi, this video is about a simple method to reverse engineer these off-the-shelf remote-controlled power sockets so that you can use a microcontroller such as the Arduino plus an RF transmitter to simulate the remote control signals in order to interface with these power sockets. It is useful for a lot of home automation projects. Now these power sockets are uh, cheap and widely available uh, the receiver is self-contained, so you don't have to uh, worry about messing with high voltages. And also, um, the same microcontroller and the uh, RF uh, transmitter, which takes just one digital pin, can be used to talk to many uh, of these sockets, including different types, at the same time. Uh, so it's really convenient. To get started, I picked up this model as an example which I purchased from Amazon.com. It comes with one remote control unit plus three individual sockets. The nice thing about this model is that it has separate on-off buttons for each socket. And for home automation projects, this is really convenient compared to some other models that only have toggle buttons. Most of these remote controls work in the 434 MHz radio frequency band. So when I press a button, I can use a standard RF receiver with matching frequency to sniff and capture the signal. As you will see later, the signal is basically composed of a sequence of digital highs and lows. So how can we record this signal? There is a very simple solution which involves using your sound card and an audio recording software. The idea is uh, to connect the um, data pin on the RF uh, trans uh, receiver to uh, your sound card through an audio cable. And this way uh, you can use your sound card to digitally sample and record the signal at reasonably high frequency. And that's it. Here's my implementation of the RF sniffing circuit, which includes the RF receiver, two resistors, and an audio cable. Um, I found the schematic of this circuit from an Arduino forum post, the link uh, to, of which is given below. Um, I've also used my handy AA saver to provide the 5 volt required by the RF receiver. This way, um, I don't need any external power supply and I can easily plug in this whole thing into the sound card at the back of my computer. Uh, remember that you should plug the cable into the line-in jack on your sound card, not the microphone jack. Next, I will use the open source Audacity software to record the signal. So basically, I will press each button on the remote control one after another. And when I'm done, I can zoom in uh, to closely check the signal's waveform. As you can see here, most of the recording is just noise. Um, but when an actual signal is received, you will see a clear sequence of uh, square waves like these. You can even play back the uh, signal as an audio wave and identify when the actual uh, RF signal is received. It's pretty straightforward to identify the patterns of the signal and write them down. But one remaining question is, what's the timing of the, uh, these waves? If I'm going to use a microcontroller to simulate the signal, I need to know the length of each segment here. Uh, this is actually not that difficult to figure out. The way I used is uh, to zoom in very closely to the signal, and you will start to see the uh, sample points. Um, because uh, I know the signal's sampling rate, which is 48 kHz by default, I can just count the number of sample points and divide that by the uh, sample rate, and that will tell me the timing of each segment. For this particular signal, I've figured out that each short delay like this one is about 433 uh, microseconds, and the long delay is about 1300 microseconds, which is three times the short delay. These timings don't have to be very accurate. You can vary them uh, within a certain range and it would still work. Anyways, the details can be found in my blog post. Of course, the uh, actual signal patterns will depend on your particular remote control model. Um, and once you've figured it out, 
you can easily write an Arduino program to reproduce the signal. Um, here's my demo program. To use it, you need an RF transmitter uh, and connect its uh, data pin to any Arduino I.O. pin. Uh, so here I'm using pin number 3. And once this is done, uh, you can upload the program to the Arduino and then it will function as a simulator of the remote control. Now, just this Arduino program itself is probably not that interesting. It would be more fun to add some internet-based control, for example, turn on or off a power socket through a web interface, or even set a time schedule to automatically turn on or off devices during a day. For this, I am going to use my Open Sprinkler controller, which already has a lot of built-in functions that can help me build a web interface with almost no extra work. Uh, just as a brief introduction, the Open Sprinkler is an open source Arduino based web enabled sprinkler valve controller. Although it's designed uh, for controlling water valves, I think of it more as a general purpose control board that has uh, the Arduino chip, the Ethernet controller, uh, LCD buttons, built in USB tiny programmer, all integrated onto a single board. It has a pretty solid uh, web interface and a fully featured uh, software stack that you can use uh, for setting time schedules or sending manual control commands. Anyways, it's a perfect platform for what I'm going to demonstrate next. Okay, here is a half-built open sprinkler. I've put in everything except the solenoid drivers, which I don't need here. Um, on uh, the left end, uh, I'm using a USB uh, cable to provide power, and on the other end, uh, there is an Ethernet cable which connects to this uh, Wi-Fi repeater that talks to my uh, main router. Uh, I've also wired in the uh, RF transmitter, and the data pin of it is connected to uh, Arduino pin 3, the same as before. I've loaded the microcontroller with the default Open Sprinkler software, uh, but I've added a few lines of code to send an RF signal when the corresponding station is uh, turned on or off. This way I can use exactly the same software to control power sockets. So let me first demonstrate manual control. I have three power sockets. Uh, they are connected to an LED light here, uh, a table lamp, uh, and also a PEGI2 LED display. Um, so when I type in the um, uh, Open Sprinkler's IP address, I will see uh, this web page with a list of buttons that I can uh, click to manually turn on or turn off a device. For example, this is the first device, um, second device, I can turn it off, um, and the third device, which is the um, LED display. I can also set a timer when I turn on the device. For example, um, if I put in 5 seconds uh, and then click on turn on, then the controller will automatically turn it off after uh, 5 seconds. And these are all uh, built-in features uh, of the Open Sprinkler software. Now let me uh, switch to the program mode. Uh, so in program mode, uh, you can uh, set a time schedule for each station or uh, each uh, socket here. Uh, for example, currently I have a program uh, which turns on each uh, of the first three sockets for uh, 8 seconds sequentially and repeats this every minute. And I can add uh, many programs here. Again, these are uh, built-in features uh, of the Open Sprinkler software. So I basically uh, didn't have to do uh, anything uh, in order to uh, you know, reuse uh, this, uh, the same web interface. Um, and you can see the demo again. Uh, the controller is turning on each device for 8 seconds exactly, and then turn it off and move on to the next device. Okay, now that I have a simple way to sniff and analyze the radio frequency signals, 
Uh, my next goal is to reverse engineer this collection of wireless temperature, uh, humidity, and rain sensors. And this will allow me to use a microcontroller plus an RF receiver to capture the data uh, sent by these uh, sensors so I can get local temperature, humidity, and rain information uh, into my microcontroller project. Uh, the tricky part is to figure out uh, the format of the signal uh, to extract the meaningful uh, information from it. Uh, I've already figured out the, uh, the temperature sensor, this one here, um, and I'm going to dive into uh, these two other sensors. So uh, stay tuned uh, to my blog.